it's been almost four years since you recorded or come out with a new album. How do you feel now that the album is out? Um, I feel rejuvenated, kind of, because after working on it so long, it's so much work. A lot of people, they're used to um, just seeing the outcome of work. They never see the side of the work you go through to produce the outcome. And uh, I feel, you know, rejuvenated and happy. It's, it's a jubilation, really, is what it is. It's like a celebration. It's like, we're done. How long did it take to come up with, I guess you almost wrote eight songs or seven songs on it? How long did it take to come up with that creative process? I don't remember. Um, I totally don't remember. I don't even count the hours or anything. Mm -hmm. Every song is different. Sometimes it happens it quickly, sometimes it happens slowly. No one can quite say what the creative process is because I have nothing to do with it almost because it's created in space. It's God's work, not mine. You know, talking about that, God gives us a lot of gifts a lot of times and you've been really blessed with a tremendous amount of gifts. And yet it seems as though a lot has been required of you. Do you sometimes regret being so utterly <laughs> famous? No, sometime, only sometime. Sometimes I want to sneak into places and not have any hoopla or, you know, and, uh, and it doesn't work all the time. Because people start and they crowd around, and, which is sweet. I mean, I shouldn't complain, but... No, but you have a, you have a right to complain because Everybody has the right to go out there and to just be alone, but it seems like that right isn't really given to you. Well, it's part of the work, I would say. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about the song Bad? I, we talked earlier, and I told you that I like the song Bad because it, it's really all about you. You are the baddest when it comes to uh, the record industry. Um. Well, <laughs> it, it is quite different from anything I've ever recorded or I've ever written. Uh -huh. uh, it's a bold statement to say, but um, I mean it in all good will, <laughs> you know, so don't take it's it too seriously. It's a good modesty, of course. Yeah, I'm saying, um, it's like a way of saying you're cool, you're, you're, uh, you're all right, you're, you're tough. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying I'm like criminally bad. Of sure. course, that's how people would take it. Um, it's, a, it's a bold statement to make. Mm -hmm. How about the video? The video is also... Another thing on this album is that a lot of songs make social statements and the video also does that too with Bad. Uh, I know that you probably didn't experience anything like that but my name is Daryl. Yeah, I know. And I had a... I grew up in Harlem in the South Bronx and I went away to school and I also had to deal with peer pressures. How did you come out about with that whole idea of doing something like that? Well, it wasn't really my idea. It's actually part of a true story where this kid tried it's to... It's my story, in a sense. Yeah, it's your story, but the truth of what really happened, uh, this kid... <laughs> don't look at me, Frank. Let's, let's, let's <laughs> do that over. Tried Hold to, on for a second, yeah. please. Tell okay. my faces. How, now, I know that you didn't write the video, but you're telling me the story is almost like the story of my life, but you're telling me that it's based on another person. Yes, it is. This kid who went to school upstate in the country, whatever, who is from the ghetto, um, and he tried to make something of his life. And he would leave his old friends behind. And when he came back um, on spring break or whatever, Thanksgiving break, his, friend, his friends became so uh, envious, jealous of him that mm -hmm. they killed him. But in the film, I don't die, of course. Yes. So it's a true story that was we had taken from Time or Newsweek magazine. Yeah. And uh, he is a black kid like me, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a sad story. But How do we, you, mm -hmm. pardon? How does that make you feel when you see those sad stories? Oh, something like that is very sad because it's all negative. It's wrong. Mm -hmm. I think that's life to want to grow and become more. And like you plant a seed, and it grows into something beautiful, mm -hmm. and it never dies. Really, I think people should be that way. You know what? My favorite song on the album is Man in the Mirror. Oh yeah, I like that a lot. That's, that's my favorite song. Uh, I tend to hold a feeling that no matter what you do in the world, it really has to start with you. 
It is my philosophy too. If you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and then make a change. Um, is it so hard to do? Yeah, well, people don't look at themselves honestly. They don't look at themselves and point the finger at them. It's always the other guy's fault or somebody else. You should change yourself. Um, look at yourself. Make better of yourself. You mm -hmm. know? <laughs> when you look in the mirror, are you happy with what you see? In, in what way? Just when you look there, in terms of that social philosophy. Um, I'm never totally satisfied. I always wish the world could be a better place. Um, no, not at all. Hopefully, you know, that's what I do with my music, mm -hmm. bring happiness to people and uh, to bring joy are and you some a, peace in their lives. Are you a prayerful person? Pardon? I said, are you a prayerful type oh, person? Oh, yeah, yeah, I pray a lot, yeah. I see a beautiful sunset and I say, God, it's beautiful, thank you. Mm -hmm. Or a baby smile or butterfly's wings or anything like that, you know. You know, on, on the album version of I Just Can't Stop Loving You, you make some very strong, sensuous remarks to a woman that you're lying next to. I was in a bed when I was doing that. Really? Also, yeah. I was laying in the bed, <laughs> cover and everything. <laughs> When I did that whole rap in the, and, in and, the dark. And the, and the lyrics go, it goes, people really don't understand me. Yeah, you know, I say a lot of people don't misunderstand me. Mm -hmm. That's because they don't know me. Mm -hmm. I guess that's true. Uh, people believe a lot of crazy stories they read. And yeah. Some is true, some is not. And uh, Does it hurt when you see those crazy stories? Sometimes. But it's part of the work, you know. Mm-hmm. You ever want to lash out in any type of way and say, hey, that's not true? Yeah, a lot of times. But why bring more attention to a thing, you uh -huh. know? Is there another favorite song of mine? Is not as much as Man in the Mirror, but Liberian Girl. Yeah. Uh, is there a Liberian Girl in your life? No, I wrote that in uh, at my house in the game room. I guess I was playing some pinballs or something. And the song just popped in my head. And uh, I think I ran upstairs, put it on tape. Uh -huh. And uh, it became Liberian Girl. Same thing with, we are the world, we are the children. I, I didn't really, I mean, I don't know why those words came. They just came as that. Uh -huh. We are the ones to make a brighter day, so let's start giving. I didn't think about it. It just, you know, it just come, it just comes. How about, one thing that I find is like what you said, it took so long to come up with all the different songs on the album, and every song is different. You have uh, Calypso influences, you have reggae influences, you have the new cool sound with one, you have uh, heavy metal with uh, Dirty Diane. I love Dirty Diane. That's, That's one, of my, one of my favorites. Why? Because it's, it's, uh, it's a life story of uh, a groupie. Um, I hate to say the word groupie, but that's what it is. Mm -hmm. And it's it's something that I've experienced and a lot of people who grow up on the road, like me. I mean, I don't, I don't remember not performing. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Do you feel as though you missed out on something by not remembering, not performing? Of course, uh, but I've gained a lot too. Mm -hmm. A lot of people's never, a lot of people never get out of their hometown, get to see other wonderful places. A lot of kids read about things that I get to see in person all over the world, in different places. So that's, I'm so happy about that. I mean, you never can have everything. Yeah. How does it feel when you go in to do a concert somewhere and literally there are tens of thousands of people that are rushing over to you just to get a glimpse? That's a wonderful feeling, especially when you see them smiling and uh, I love the fans. Um, I think it's very sweet. I feel thankful is, is how I feel. I do really do. I don't take any of it for granted. What would you say, what interests you most about life? What interests me most about life um, is learning, finding out new things, exploring different worlds. Um, I'm so interested in the human anatomy now, and the brain, and, mm -hmm. and um, so many different things like that, and the bones and everything. I know that, and you know, this is a sensitive area, but you were very much interested in the bones of the elephant man, John Merrick. Yes. Is that because of your anatomical interest? Yes, I've been to the London School for Doctors twice 
and I visited John Merrick's uh, remains, who I, I feel a closeness to. I, I love the story of the elephant man. Um, a very sad story. Um, Would you someday like to do maybe a remake of the movie or the play? Maybe. Maybe, but I feel it's been done so well already with David Lynch, and right. I think it was John Hurt who played. That's right, who played John the Merrick, movie. Yeah, mm -hmm. that I, I, uh, I don't think I could contribute any better than what they've done. The part that I like best is when, after he gains confidence, and then he's back on his way after having gone to the carney, they st stole him out of the hospital, uh, and then he's inside the subway station, and then finally he has to yell oh, and yeah. a sigh of. Yeah, leave me alone. Leave yeah. me alone. I'm not an animal. I'm a human I'm being. I'm a human yeah. being. Do we as human beings treat people as animals too many times? I think so. Man's inhumanity to man, I mean, that's what war is all about. Sure. So many of the problems in the past. Are you scared of war? I don't think anybody likes war, in truth. No, I don't like war. I like mm -hmm. peace. I'm a peaceful person. Do you ever think about ever being an ambassador or anything like that? The fact that you're accepted around this whole world. You ever think about being some type of an ambassador? I feel I'm that already with, with, with my music and what I've done with music because it breaks all barriers. I don't have to make a political statement. I do all of that with music. Mm -hmm. It breaks all language barriers and everything to all races of people. It goes all over the world. And it's fun to see kids from India or uh, whatever country you name, you know, who know about the music. Okay, uh, last question, sure. This will be about the tour. Uh, appreciate the time. Can you... Hold on one second. Okay. Why did you choose to start your worldwide tour in Japan and not really give your fans here in America a chance to see you until the end of the year? Well, as you remember, the Victory Tour was all American, and the rest of the world didn't get anything. So it's, it's good to be fair, you know. And actually, I think it's more fair because um, the show would be much better when we get here. The worst thing to me personally to see uh -huh. is, is an opening show because, you know, it's not as tight as it can be. Sure. And it was something that my manager had done and the people who work for me, wherever they book it, if I like it, I'll go, you know, and I like Japan, I've been there before. Any apprehension about touring by yourself for the first time? I've done so much solo work. Even when I was little, 13, solo albums, and solo appearances on TV shows, and it is just another uh, road. But of course you always think and feel things. I don't see Marlon next to me, I don't feel Jermaine, I don't, you know. <laughs> sure.